man, if it wasn't for my faith, I don't know where I'd be right now. Probably not here. A local world renowned runner's journey through sobriety leads to a message of hope for those struggling with addiction. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. Mike has the evening off. Dick Beardsley is most famously known for his record setting marathon and long distance running. But it's his story of addiction and long road to recovery and hope that is inspiring others in our community who are struggling with the same demons. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood shares his life changing message. Sharing intimate, dark details of your life to a complete stranger can be nearly impossible. I can't say that I'm sorry that it happened. It happened. Not for Dick Beardsley. And now, hopefully through that, I can help others get their lives back together. Sitting down with the smiling, decorated Hall of Fame runner, you would never know he wasn't always glowing. I firmly believe that I mean, I should have died from my addiction. Beardsley battled painkiller addiction in the 90s after numerous car crashes and other accidents. It got to the point where I got about as low as you could possibly go. <clears throat> and then God said, okay, enough's enough. And now you're going to go out and tell your story and you're going to help others and their families that are dealing with this to get better and get their lives back. Beardsley is now 19 years clean. It's gone by quick, but I never take one day of it for granted. After he met with me, he shared his message to a larger crowd at First Step Recovery about the addiction challenges he's faced. It was kind of scary because you, you think, am I going to fall back? But I had people that love me and care for me that were there to make sure that, that didn't happen. But Beardsley bravely shared another battle. I just lost my son less than three months ago. He suffered from PTSD, and in um, October 4th, he, you know, he, he took his own life, and um, it makes everything else I've gone through in my life seem like nothing. Beardsley admits his strength his purpose through his message comes from his late son, Andy. His last words to me were, I love you, Pop. And um, those words I'll never forget as long as I live. In giving his testimony tonight, the accolade he hopes to win doesn't come in gold. If one person leaves tonight and what I had to say gives them that little extra strength to stay the course and and stick with their recovery and not give up on themselves or other people in fargo christine stanwood and it's a victory for me and for everybody else valley news live in the united states nearly 100 americans die every day because of drug overdoses and if you or someone you know is struggling with drug abuse call the recovery.org's hotline at 1-888-989-0782 Bad news for smokers and for some local businesses. The price of cigarettes in Minnesota is about to go up again. Starting on Friday, every pack sold in Minnesota will include about $3.50 in taxes. That's about 12 cents more per pack than smokers pay now. Now, Brady Olson owns a convenience store in Moorhead and says every time the taxes go up, it crushes his business. We lost about 80% of our cigarette sales. So in that sense, those 80% of the people went away. You know, they may still at times buy gas, but if they're going to get cigarettes elsewhere, they're buying their gas and their other stuff there. So we've lost a lot of those sales along with it, you know. Um, we've had to raise prices. We've had to compensate in other areas to try to, you know, maintain what we have. Minnesota's tax on cigarettes will increase to three fifty four dollars a pack. North Dakota's rate, $0.44 cents a pack. A community reflected back today, remembering massive fireballs bursting into the sky two years ago today near Castleton, North Dakota. Two trains derailed, one carrying crude oil, causing multiple explosions and a huge emergency response. It was a day that also brought national attention to our state. A final report for the 2013 derailment has not been released yet by the NTSB. But BNSF has said one train had a broken axle, causing for the oil train to collide into it. 
A garage fire left behind nearly $30,000 in damages today in a township near Bemidji, Minnesota. When fire crews arrived on scene, the structure was fully engulfed in flames. Firefighters were able to quickly put out the fire and no injuries were reported, but the cause of this is currently still under investigation. The photo sharing site Instagram boasts millions of users In with that it also comes great responsibility. Now when you search certain words though like skinny, you will receive this content advisory telling you some of the pictures may be graphic in nature. With so many people using the app it's easy for some to idolize these pictures and try to imitate or become that photo that does not actually represent reality. With a lot of people hitting the gym for their New Year's resolution. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker brings us the perspective of a trainer who says there can be a big difference between skinny and healthy. Make realistic goals for yourself and how you want to feel and how, what you want to accomplish. Like maybe it's a pair of pants that you want to fit into. Don't look at everybody else. Everybody else has their own goals and their own you know, unrealistic goals, so to speak. That's the advice personal trainer Jamie Smith gives to everyone no matter if you're an avid gym goer or just starting out. Make your goals small. Um, make your goals day by day or week by week. You know, maybe you want to lose a pound or two um, every week instead of, I want to lose 60 pounds and look like this. Katie Stinsland and her husband David work out together. They inspire each other and don't pay attention to the images on any social media sites where people post daily their idea of what the perfect body is supposed to look like. You just have to be comfortable with yourself. Don't focus on what you see on the internet or tabloids or magazines or anything. Concentrate on you. You're your own body. Work on that. And yes, that might be hard considering photos like these show up on news feeds every day. But that's the only way you'll ever be satisfied with how you look, according to Stenslin. Don't try to focus on, I want that body. You focus on your own because everybody's body type is different. Stenslin and Smith both agree. The results you see at the gym are only about making you a happier and most importantly, healthier person. Give yourself 20 minutes three times a week. Just say, I'm going to do this 20 minutes three times a week. I'm just going to go in there. I'm just doing this for myself and just do it. Stay healthy and keep at it. If you fall, get back up because it's a life journey. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. The American Academy of Pediatrics urges parents to tell their kids what they see on TV, social media, or magazines is not the standard by which they should judge their bodies. Seeing the flag raised at Iwo Jima to seeing them fly over the front yards is a symbol of honor, but not many people may realize that there are rules that come to the flag. Valley News Team's Giovanna Simic caught up with a local veteran who is speaking up about the proper way to treat our American flag. For Army veteran Melvin Krein, the Stars and Stripes are more than a flag. It's a symbol of honor. We were there ready to give our life for that flag when we were in the military. And they still are today, you know. All the ones over in Afghanistan or wherever, they're still ready to lay their life on the line for that flag. So, respect it. The flag may be displayed all day, but it must be properly illuminated during the night, meaning the light must be shining bright on the flag so that it is recognizable. And when the flag has served up its purpose, it must be disposed of in the proper way. When the flag gets kind of ratty looking, it's supposed to be taken to certain places where they take care of them, they burn them, like the VFW or the American Legion or a place like that where they, they do it properly. Now many know that there is a code for the U.S. flag, and when the flags aren't displayed properly, for some it's a sign of disrespect. I think it's great that they're patriotic, you know, but if you're going to do it, let's do it in the right way or else don't put up a flag at all. There's a lot of people died for that flag, you know. And I think it's uh, when people don't display it right, it's kind of a disgrace to the flag. Joanna Simic, Valley News Live. Now, not illuminating the flag is not against the law, but for more information on the flag code, go to valleynewslive.com and click on this story.